Hey, Dad. Yeah. I know I haven't visited you all summer, but um, I have the school report, and I have to do like a like a autobiography or whatever mm -hmm. on a famous person. A famous person like me? No, I mean like a real person. Oh, like a real person. Like a real famous person. You haven't visited me all summer, and you come to me and you want to do a book report about school. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? What's the book report about? Um, I don't know, like um, somebody, like history of them. Whoa. Oh, maybe that guy, um, Bernard Diaz. Bernard Diaz. Yes. The infamous ghost of Bernard Diaz. Yes. You want to do a story on him? Yes. Kid, I've been doing a story on the infamous Bernard Diaz for a lot of years. And you've never paid attention. And now you want me to tell you the story? Mm hmm I don't think you're ready for it. I am. You are? Yeah, let's go. Oh, well, let's go. I'm ready. Quit playing around. Come on, let's go to my office. Sorry. All right. I'm going to go show him. Going to my office. He wants to know about Bernard Diaz. So I'm going to go ahead and let him do a story on the infamous ghost of Bernard Diaz. Well, the reason I'm going to record this is because whenever I talk about Bernard Diaz, a lot of things seem to happen. And this is a ghost that I've been following for a lot of years, son. You taking notes? <laughs> Those are some of the notes you should be taking. These pictures right here, I took in Mexico, in Sinaloa, and Guasave, long time ago. This is the ghost of Bernard Diaz. De Castello. De Castillo. Castillo. He's an old guy. So let's go see. This is Bernard Diaz. That's exactly who Bernard Diaz is. Conquest of Mexico. Conquest of Mexico. In his third effort, Diaz took part in campaigns against the Aztec. During this campaign, Diaz spoke frequently with his fellow soldiers about their experiences. Oh. Exactly. This is Bernard Diaz when he first came. He came with the great, um, con the guy who conquered Mexico. Of Hernando Cortez. Are those nuts in his hand? No, it's jewelry. Oh. Don't be funny. So, this is Bernard Diaz right here. Bernal Diaz del Castillo was born in 1492 in Medina mm -hmm. del Campo, Spain. He came from a poor family and received little education. He sailed to Tierra Firm. What's that say? Tierra de whatever. Pirmes in Spain. With the expedition led by Bedarius Davila in 1514 to make his fortune, but after two years found few opportunities there. Many of the settlers have been sickened or killed by an epidemic and there were and there was political unrest. So he came to Mexico for fortune. Yes. And that's what he found. Right there. Be before before I get into the story of the ghost of Bernard Diaz, I went and, and did a lot of research. You know, I've been going to Mexico since I was a kid. Yes. And a lot of strange things have been happening. Mm. You know, the first, some of the first ones we can start off is the most infamous of all, is La Llorona. La Llorona, here. Are those her kids? Yes, those are her kids, and that's a girl that she, what, what did she do to her kids? Drown them. She drowned them. There's a lot of stories on why she drowned at them. A lot of them saying, you know, it goes back to the Mayans or it goes back to because she was super pretty and her husband left her. But it's a, it's a story. You know what? Not only that, you guys were on the very same river, Joe, that La Llorona drowned there. Can you remember that one time when your uncle seen that big ugly bird flying? Yeah. That was it. So, well, La Llorona, you know, she drowned at her kids. So every night she would run to the banks of the water and she would scream for her kids. And she would cry, that's what La Llorona means, what? And she would cry, and she would cry, and she would cry. But by then it was too late, all her children had drowned it. And now there's just evil spirits that sit around. Nobody knows exactly why she did it, but it's a true story. What's that thing? And you guys were on the very same, what's that? What is that? Oh, that's like, that's the Chupacarvas right there. See the Chupacarvas, is it goes back to the Mayans. You know, there's always been a lot of different chupacabras and stuff. Look, this is La Llorona, but the Mayan times when she would come. These are all these are all true sightings and stuff. Look, this is the old chupacabras that used to hit the banks of the Mayans during during back to the Aztecs. But, Here's um, an, another one that I've been really part of is La Lechuza right here. 
is the um it's the owl she's not always as pretty as that when my dad described it to us or like this in mexico that she'll swing down a lot of times a lot of drunk mexicans will be riding their bikes and they'll come and they'll gouge your eyes out <laughs> that's what happened and i had a you know forever since your grandma's i would had encounters with la lechuza right there i've been followed since i was a kid and um, that's something I, that I had encountered. There's one time I was driving home during a time when my mom was sick, and um, this, the Chusa came flying right at me, hit me right in my windshield. True story. Oh my gosh. Wow. Let's see. Oh no, we just hit a, a now. It's, it's been following me for like 20 years. Isn't it? Since I was a kid, when the first owl started following me, they've been coming after me. That's a true testimony. You guys know that. Amazing. See? I'll get groove you all the way, baby. So we do it. And I can swear to you, man, when I when I turned that lechusa right over, it looked like me, the back of my big old head. I swear, man, it was like one of the most scariest things that I've ever seen. Now, the Lechusa, you know, she goes back to, to also, to the Mayans, to the Aztecs. You know, she, to me, she's a beautiful bird, but, you know, I got a long history with her. On that same very river, on that, on that same river, Joe, that we were on, mm -hmm. this is the story that comes from our ranch. Your great, your grandpa, you know, that's right there. When his dad was a kid, his dad was a kid, his dad would run to that same very tree. You know what I'm talking about? Your, your great grandpas would go and they would um, harass one of the ladies right there. She got tired of it, so she would do at nighttime. She would hang her hair, she would hang herself from her hair and she would swing back and forth and scare all the kids. But a lot of them were young kids getting drunk, getting borracho. So they'll take off but she became a witch and when she became a witch she would hang from the tree at night and yell at all the kids and all the kids were also scared then she would turn into a werewolf and she would go and she would eat all our livestock that's a true story my grandpa's still scared to go to that same very tree and not only that they would turn into a werewolf and eat everything in sight. Well, um, I have one question about her. Who is she? Like, what is she, a sloth? Uh, a sloth. <laughs> well, yeah, she is. Well, she's, you know, Wero, the guy that used to take you on the boat, you know, the yeah. guy? That's his people from years ago, way before he was born. That was his people. Could you try to act like you're smart. I am. Yeah, I'm smart. Well, why don't you do a story on George Washington or Prince Charles? Why do you want to do a story on Bernard Diaz? You're going to be wasting my well, time. Well, the kids are across already doing it. So, this is a... Um, well, these are the ghosts of Mexico. There's a lot of them, man. They go deep roots and stuff like that. Wait, how do you know if it's Bernard Diaz? What did you do? Draw this first or see that first? What did you do? Well, that's a good question. And I can answer it. Um, I didn't know it was Bernard Diaz until later. I took these pictures where we're actually filming. You know, since I was a kid, I've been I've been going through a lot of spiritual things since I was down there. So I'm gonna explain that. That's a good question. I'm gonna exactly break it down to you, okay? We actually found some images of Bernard Diaz. Look at this one right there. That's the one we're gonna go to right there. Keep this is a long time ago. Well, come over here, look. These images right here are images of people and stories and stuff like this. This image right here, watch. The ghost of him. This is, look, Joe. These are actual, hold this. Hold this right there. These are drawings of sketches that I did of what they explained to me. Of, of, of. So, for my pictures, there's almost a direct... Look at that. If you look through there, is it almost the same? Mm -hmm. 
So it's almost the same. And right here, he's actually smiling. So it's more of a person that you can see. Yeah, right here. So let's get that one. Get that one. Let's check it out. That's that's the more recent. That's the Bernard Diaz. That's the one we know. How he came. Look at that. You see? Here's the, the here's the hat. The two <coughs> eyes, the nose. And with that green dye, you probably disturbed him or something. Like that. So we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna explain to you exactly how I got down. To What's up with this picture? Th this picture, I brought it out for a reason. This is who? How do Larry? you know this person? Larry. That's you a long time ago? Yeah. That's Larry, the Wolfman from Mexico. You know what about Larry? He's the only person right now on this earth that can trace anything back to the Mayan calendar, to the Aztec calendar, anything. He's the only person that's in every single book. What trip out? A couple years ago, we went to the freak show where he's at out in Venice Beach because he can't be in Mexico no more. So I went and I took him these pictures. I took him these pictures and I showed them to him. I say, hey, Larry, you know who this is? And you know what he said? My father is. He said, Fuck. Yeah. Is he really? He knew exactly who it was. He said, that's Bernard Villas de Castillo. Very bad man, he told me. He said, that's the reason why the people of Mexico turned against, you know, the, the famous wolf people. Then he went on and told me the story. Bernard Diaz is really a ghost. You turn old and evil, and you have a lot of secrets about what really happened in Mexico. And this is what he told me. Well, you're gonna have to pay attention. I know you have a, um, let me see, you got some black ink on your face. All right, so you're gonna have to pay attention right here because I don't got time for all this. This is according to what the um, the Wolfman told me, your friend. This whole um, story? This whole story. Well, Bernard Diaz came with Hernando Cortez. They came, he was young, he was like 19 years old. And they got to America and and they knew there was gold. They knew there was, there's, they were just searching for new land. Well, during that time, the great emperor, Montezuma, already knew they arrived. It's stuff that we can find in the Aztec calendar. You know that, yeah. write that down. Um, it's in books. So they knew exactly on that day right here that people were coming for them. They knew. So when, when they arrived, you know, they didn't know where they were at. So when they got here, they thought they, were, they actually thought they were gods. You know, a lot of the people thought they were gods. So they started taking advantage of that. They knew by them that the people thought they were gods, that they can take advantage of it and they can end up with riches. Everybody knew that. And that's exactly what they, they, they planned to do. But, you know, along the way, they had a lot of resistance. So a lot of the people, a lot of the women and children were getting sacrificed, murdered, and even abused by some of the, the Spanish that came on these, these whatever, these boats. Well, during that time, you know, the great emperor, he heard about this. You know, he, he heard about it. And um, so he knew that he had to stop this. But how can you stop gods, he's thinking. You can't stop gods. So the only thing he can do is let them come. Well, on the way over there, you know, a lot of the Indians were telling them, hey, um, you know, there's a great empire. There's a, a great big city, you know, and there's a lot of stuff over there. There's, there's just women and there's just gold. And there's, um, hold on, I'll get over there. There's gold and there's all kinds of stuff. So they already knew they, they can't go back now. So all they can do is march. So they, they started marching. So they get to this new land and the, the, the great emperor knew that already. He knew exactly what day they came. He knew exactly when they were coming. And he knew that something was gonna go down. It was in the prophecies of the but they actually happened to come on the day that God day come. yeah they came no, on like the coincidence though they're all no 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 there's no coincidence there's no coincidence huh joe no that that had really happened so you're how did you know that part no he was saying on that calendar they were gonna come the gods but they 
they came the day they thought the gods were going to come, so that's why they thought they were going. Exactly. <laughs> well, anyways, they started taking advantage of this stuff. So they're going down, they're being treated like gods. They're, they're coming, they're going, hey, 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 guys, go over there. And you women, come with me. And the children, too. So they're doing bad things. Well, on that same very day, the emperor was sitting there and they came up to him. They said, hey, we're here. They're here. He's like, who's here? He's like, they're here. He knew exactly who was there. Well, um, well now, now they're on their way to the city and nothing can stop them. They're, they're coming. You know, it's going to take them at least seven months to march there. So what he does... He started rethinking this. I don't know, man. These gods are acting kind of weird. You know, they're, they're raping our women. They're taking our children. They're killing our men. They're, 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 they're doing very bad things. I don't know about these gods. So let's send them a message. So he said, let's send them a message. Let me go show you some of this stuff. Well, first of all, what he did, he was going to set some of their biggest witchcraft, their sorcerers, they're shamans. He's going to send them. And he's going to send them with great power to show these, these, the Spanish, you know, how much power they had. But they told him they're coming with these giant monsters. They're coming with this, this, this shell. They're coming with they these thought, giant beasts. They thought they're, they were, um, they thought these men, because I remember this in school, they thought these things were two headed people. They didn't know what it was. So, He's thinking I have to send the biggest witchcraft. So I'm gonna have to do it. Let's go check it out. Come over here at some of the paintings I did. So the great emperor, he sends out his best sorcerers. How do you say sorcerers? Am I right? Yeah. What's a sorcerer? Anybody? Source what's a sorcerer? It's a wizard. He, a wizard. Ha he has a scepter that can chain blast monsters. Okay. Look. Smack big hands. This is the sorcerers he sent out. These are some of the the, the he knew that he would send his best people out. So he went and got his best sorcerer, his best magic, and he sent them down to them. Well, he sent them down to them and they tried to perform all kinds of witchcraft on them. A lot of the witchcraft wasn't working. He told them to turn them into frogs, make them dance funny, make them act different, but they weren't working at all. He had them do different things to them, but they weren't. It wasn't affecting them. These giant monsters they were riding on, it didn't do nothing to them. But he sent out his very best, and they came back and they told the emperor, these things are not working at all. But still, he didn't give up. After he came back and he told the emperor, the emperor sent out his very best, and they sent out potions, and they sent out whatever. They sent out everything they could. But nothing was working, so the, the word got back to the emperor that, hey, these monsters are not stopping. And there's nothing they can do, and they're coming. So the emperor now, he, he tried everything in his power to stop Bernard Diaz, Hernando Cortez, and everybody. He knew he wanted to turn them into frogs. He wanted to turn them, you know, witchcraft. So that wasn't going to work. So now Montezuma said, hey, made a poison it's time to make the big one it's time to do the biggest potion so what he did in his power to show these men that were coming on monsters you know in their words he knew he had to do the biggest potion of ever they've been planning and real true story it's in the book what he did he gathered 10,000 men Aztec warriors soldiers anybody Farmers, men, he gathered them and he stretched them across because they're marching, they're coming now. They're coming all the time telling them. So he stretched out 10,000 men from, 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 from here all the way to San Diego. That's how far, you know, that's how far. And he had them sacrifice themselves. True story, the power just... All of them. So now, in his words, we're gonna look up his literature. He wrote, is Bernard Diaz wrote in one of his books. It was the most gruesomest thing he ever seen. It was barbaric. 
it was something they'd never ever witnessed you know being a pirate and out there in the seas and it scared them it stunk and for every hundred miles there's dead people everywhere with their hearts ripped out and he knew there's no turning back and he was a young soldier he was young 19 years old but he knew it this is a different world whoever did this has mass power beyond anything they've seen but you see we have to remember they were people of God and the people of God were more crazier and they knew whoever had this power had to be stopped you know in the name of God and Jesus and they were marching with their crosses and they were going to put this witchcraft behind them that was their mission now because the world can't go on like this they thought and even though these people were evil themselves but in God's words they're actually doing the work of God these people got their own God different you know they're going to clash and only one of them can win well after he sacrificed those men he sent out his same sorcerers and they gathered potions for seven months because they're marching they gathered sweat and tears from every dead guy that was on the floor every dead guy that sacrificed himself that, was, that, laid, head? Yes, that was laid on the floor they went and they took everything from you know tears blood and sweat and those they took all these back and they gathered and they took them back to Montezuma and Montezuma dropped them in a pot just like that and they boiled it and they cooked it and after they cooked it they took a stone head like this they took a stone head like this and they submerged it boom they got it underwater picked it up filled it up put a cork on it buried it now and that was gonna save their lives right there that was the potion right there they're gonna do that would change history so next thing you know the time was coming they're arriving they knew they were coming and next thing you know that on the certain day 500 years ago that the new world meets the old world because Hernando Cortez Bernard Diaz Montezuma and his right hand Eagles um, lieutenant general two different worlds clashing right there and actually Bernard Diaz wrote he wrote he tried to shake the Emperor's hand he tried to like hey and all these guys you know what they did what they do they pulled like, they drew they drew their shoulders get back you couldn't even walk you couldn't even be next to him and the you know that's he's 19 years old that's not your age huh Joe almost yeah. imagine meeting the Emperor the most gruesomest Empire of the history of the what world is this? We won't go to it right now. Well, because they thought they were gods. They thought they thought they were gods. So they're gonna give them that 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 VIP treatment. It's too late. They're here. Mm -hmm. Nothing we can do. So they let them take over the city. They let them take over the city. They let them have what they want. They let them have all the women. They gave them gold. They gave them jewels. They took advantage of it. Bernard Diaz Montezuma took advantage. You want to know what's happened next? What happened next? What happened next is that two worlds have collided from the, you know, the Aztecs, the Spanish. The Aztecs have deep culture and roots. They have a lot of gods and stuff. They were like time travelers. And, and, and one thing that Hernando Cortez and Bernard Diaz is they were people of God and they didn't like that you know so they had a meeting with the great emperor they had a meeting with them and they told them um, straight up they told hey you know that God of yours you guys got we don't like all that crazy stuff you're doing we don't like that and our God's a little different and but Montezuma's like, nah, our God's been around for thousands of years and we've been living by and by for a whole lot. So they've been trying to convert them. Exactly. So he's like, I don't know, man, but all these killing people and, and all that. And he goes, we already had Jesus and he sacrificed himself. 
one time and they were going back and forth but you know our god we got to sacrifice people every single day you know there has to be bloodshed every single day for our gods and they told him no you can't you know you can't so the next thing they did is something different and that's what happened 1492 spanish explorers land in the west indies 1502, Christopher Columbus meets Maya traders in the Gulf of Honduras. <clears throat> 1502, Moctezuma II, the last independent Aztec ruler, becomes Diatorani and Tenochtitlan. 1507, a new 52 year cycle begins for the Aztecs with the new fire ceremony. And then 1517, the first of the three explore, explorer missions to Mesoamer Mesoamerica from Cuba is led by Francisco Hernandez de Cordoba. 1519, Spanish explorers led by Hernan Cortez land in Mexico. That's us. That's our story. What else? 1521, Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. All right. Falls to Cortez <clears throat> and his Spanish troops on 13 August after a siege of 93 days. 93 days they fought, huh? It's a long time. Be be because there are people of God, there was no. There was only one solution, and Hernando Cortez knew it. Hernando Cortez was in charge, and he knew. It. That the only thing they can do is take captive of the great emperor Montezuma. Bernard Diaz was young and he could only follow what Hernando Cortez said. So Hernando Cortez had to get back to the coast and he was going to mail a letter to the queen and he told her, bring soldiers, bring a lot. And he told them exactly what's going on. And he knew it was going to get ugly. So the next thing you know, um, Hernando Cortez takes off. Boom, he's gone. He's on his horse marching back to... He leaves Bernard Diaz by himself to watch the great emperor. So, this is... Um, well, Hernando Cortez and Bernard Diaz, they knew there was no win to this. They were stuck on their gods. He was stuck on his god. Hernando Cortez knew that he had to write a letter to the Queen of Spain and ask for more military. They knew it. And they had to do it quick. So Hernando Cortez takes off, leaving Bernard Diaz behind. And Hernando Cortez went to write a letter to the Queen to bring more soldiers, more everything, more artillery, because it didn't get ugly. Because these people were cannibals and savages. And he knew that something had to be done. He knew that he knew talking wasn't gonna solve anything. So, why, Hernando Cortez leaves Bernard Diaz in charge. Well, Bernard Diaz, they, they, took him, they took the emperor hostage. They took him into control. And, and he talked to him. He spent a lot of alone time with them. By then, Montezuma was confused because he, let, he felt he let down his people, let down everything. So, he started telling them about who he was and who they were. He told them they were ancestors of the Mayans, who were the greatest time travelers of the world. He told them that he couldn't switch over gods. You know, he told him that there was things that they knew about the world that nobody else knew. He told them everything. And, and Bernard Diaz didn't like that. He wanted to know the truth. And the great emperor told him that is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. And finally, Finally, Bernard Diaz was going to have him execute him. He was going to take his own sword out. He was going to take out his own very weapon and slam him down right there and just end it. But right when he told him that, the great emperor told him, Hey, I know what you're here for. You're here because of eternal life. And he told him, Eternal life is what everybody's looking for. Everybody want to live together. And you know what? And Hernando Cortez, you're right. Eternal life. 
Then he told him that there's only one God that can give him eternal life, and that's their God. And around that time, you know, he was confused because that's what they were there for, eternal life. Then what? Hold on. Then the great emperor walks over and he goes, I have something for you. And he walks over and he brings this out. The great crystal skull that was submerged in the... Into the blood. In the blood of the potion of what? Death. Of death. Of what? Life or death? Of the people that of they... Sacrifice. Of the sacrifice. Yeah. So he went and he took it. And real quick, here. Boom, he grabs it. He just grabs it like nothing. And he walks over right to him. And he tells him, this is what you're here for. You're here for eternal life. And and, and he just grabs it like you just grabbed it. And um, he's ready to... Next thing you know, without even telling him anything, he looks at it as this bloody old skull that's been submerged in the ground for months. He takes it and he drinks it. And he drinks it. Well, during that time, when he drank it, he started getting dizzy, he started getting blurry. He got dizzy and he fell to the floor. And he looks over and he tells him, but what did you give me? He said, I gave you eternal life of the most darkest witchcraft that we ever created. And right there, Bernard Diaz knew it. I just did witchcraft, which is so against his religion. And he knew that it was gonna be trouble. And he knew that the world would change between the old world and the new world. Well, after he drank it, Bernard Diaz knew he messed up. He knew that the world would be different for him. He knew that he went into witchcraft and there's no turning back, huh? Yep. After he drank it, after he drank it, he knew he messed up. So really quick, he's laying on the floor and he looks up and he tells them, you know, you poisoned me. He's like, no, that's what you were here for. You were here for eternal life. Uh -huh. So, right there and then, Bernard Diaz storms out of his, out of the, at the quarters right there where he was at, goes and he orders all his troops to let's move. We gotta go. When he came out, when Bar Bernard, he noticed that all the Aztec warriors were up on the, the ceiling looking down on him. And he knew that he had to run. So that night, they planned a big escape and a big old war broke out. It was called La Noche Triste. You know what that means? The night of something. The sad night. Because a big old war broke out between the Indians, the natives, the Aztec warriors, and the Spanish conquistadores. And they fought all night. All night they fought. Where it was bloodshed throughout this. It was the biggest bloodshed. They were killing each other left and right. They, they killed, they, they, they were trapped on a bridge because the Aztec Empire was on an island, you know that? It was on an island, so they had to get off the island. And they had to fight their way off of it. And a lot of people were murdered or massacred. But it wasn't nothing compared to what Bernard Diaz and Hernando Cortez did right before that. They murdered and massacred thousands of people from where they even got there. They raped women and children. They, 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 they told them they were gods, they were doing worse. So Bernard Diaz had it coming. Well, they escaped that night. They escaped. A lot of soldiers died. A lot of Aztec warriors, you taking notes? Yeah. A lot of Aztec warriors died. A lot of them. And so did a lot of Spanish conquistadores. They died too. But he swam the way, you know, he got away. Well, right after that, the big plague hit. A lot of the, um, the Indians died because of the uh, diseases, huh? Yep. Smallpox, chicken pox, all the stuff they brought, they died. By the time even um, Hernando Cortez came back with a lot of soldiers, the war was almost over. They, they went and they drained the lake and they fought for 90 days. They fought and they destroyed everything. And the city known as Mexico City, Tenochtitlan, was conquered by Hernando Cortez and Bernard Diaz. Well, soon after that, you know, Bernard Diaz, he, he was, 
he was given slaves and he was given islands and stuff like that. But deep down inside, he knew there was something wrong. That the poison he drank was building up. It was bothering him bad. He was getting sick. It was pressure and it was coming out. And he didn't want to tell nobody that the only thing he could say is that he drank something very, very poisonous and it was in his body. Something only that our ancestors, the Mayans, were doing who passed it on to the Aztecs. The deepest black magic in the world. And he had to survive it but not telling anybody. He knew, because if he told anybody, you know what happened? They would kill him. Oh, they would have butchered him. The, the Catholic Church would have killed him, his dad, his mom, his whole family. So it was against his religion. It was against his religion, what he did. And he knew he fell into black magic. It was the worst. So, Hernando Cortez had to keep it a secret from everybody. So he lived to be an old man. And he, he lived to tell his, tell no stories about what he really did. Well, 80 something years later when he was about to die, he was sitting there with the queen of Spain and he was sitting there and he told them, hey, I have something to tell you. It's been bothering me. And they're like, what, tell us. This is after he wrote books and stuff. He wrote a lot of books. So he told them, remember when I first met the emperor? Remember when I first shook his hands? I tried to shake his hands. You know, I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. But I fell into something he was telling the queen. They told me things that only they knew. He told me they were time travelers. Then he told me about eternal life and the queen was like, what, what did you do? And he was sitting there like, I have something to tell you. And they were waiting, all kinds of priests were around, all kinds of noble people were around. And they were looking at him and they were just surrounding him. He was about to die. And next thing you know, he was about to tell them, he started falling over. Like, how would you fall over if you're an old man? And you're about to die. Like, and your last, your last breath. How would you do it? Your last breath. <coughs> like that. It's exactly what he did. It's exactly what he did. But you hear that, ha ha ha? Well, guess what? All that pressure was building up. All that pressure was coming out of him. For decades and decades, he was living like that with guilt. And it was coming up. And he felt it. He felt something. So he started vomiting. And he started breathing saliva like bad. Bad. And he was like, you know, the, the queen wanted to know what was happening. He was like, remember, te acuerdas, ese tiempo, que pasó? He was telling them, and next thing you know, he was coughing and coughing, and next thing you know, a big old white bubble came out. <clears throat> and it came out. For us. A soul? Like a bubble? Like a... Like a soul. Nobody did he seen it. Like everything just... <clears throat> it came, came out, and a big old something came out of his mouth, like a burp or something. And he just spit it out. <clears throat> And whatever it was, they just flew away like this and everybody watched it. Like flew into the yep. sun? And went into the jungle. And what do you think that was it? What do you think that was? The ghost. The ghost of Bernal Diaz. Well, the Wait, ghost... did he die in Spain? He died in... Let's check it out. He died in die Mexico. Let me see. Where did he die? He died in Mexico right here at the time. I was about to say, 1950 he something described the work. Madrid. Diaz died in 1885. He died in Mexico. He died in 1885. Yeah, that's kind of new. I think that old. Oh. That's not that old. No. 1885. Oh, like 1885. He died in eight, 1585. That was a long time ago. All right. Yeah, that's. Good. All right. So this is what happened next. Well, now we're going back. to the Wolfmen of Mexico. Well, the Wolfmen of Mexico, what happened, you know, they're the only ones that are closest to the Mayans than anybody. After he told me this story, he started telling me about, about how people change against them. The wolves were real famous in Mexico. They loved them. But after the Spanish came and con conquered everybody, destroyed everybody, whenever they'll see a wolf person, 
they would throw rocks at them and chase them off and kill them. So, but no, he's one of the original ghosts. The original ghosts of Mexico are every, there are a lot of them. A lot of them would meet up at nighttime. Then Bernard Diaz would come. And this is how Bernard Diaz looked right before he died. They were describing to the queen of how he looked. He looked kind of evil. He looked kind of evil. Oh, he was look, he's really looking evil, huh? Like possessed. Possessed? How would you describe him? Demonic. Demonic. Well, this is how he looked right before he died. He was an old man. He take that hat off, he had no hair left. So, this is something he he um, looked like. This started a long time ago when the first witnesses back in Oaxaca, deep down in the jungles along the pyramids, a lot of villagers witnessed something that it started a whole tale of scary stories. They started saying it was Bernard Diaz, the ghost, but they weren't sure. They started seeing this thing come out of from behind the bushes. They didn't know what it was, but they knew when he said, Largate! Largate! And all the villagers were turned away and started running. You wouldn't even want to look at them in their eyes. You can see the fear of what they had to witness. And all of them started going. People would run. People would leave the villages, run from them. And it was, it was the infamous Bernard Diaz chasing all the people away. Everybody got the hell out of there. A little more north of Mexico, more people started spotting him. People were getting scared where they were dropping their things and running. And people started scrambling. But some people would want to look and see what they're facing. And he would yell in the middle of the night, Largate! Largate! A lot of the villagers weren't afraid until they said Bernard Diaz. And once they say Bernard Diaz, they would get the hell out of there and run for their lives out of the jungle. Bernard Diaz! Bernard Diaz! Ya viene! Largate! 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 That's all you would hear is Largate, Largate, the infamous Bernard Diaz. It was like 400 years later or 500 years later when your dad, the famous Augie Rubio, goes down into Mexico. I even took a few villagers with me, you know. I wasn't afraid of Bernard Diaz. I didn't even know who he was, but my family did. My uncles knew. They couldn't even say the name. They were afraid to say his name for reals. Because they knew the destruction. Luckily it was the wolf man who's not afraid to say his name. But, but, but. And they were out of there. Yep. So anyways, you know, that's me. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to go check out the video now of the actual video. See the t-shirt you're wearing? Yep. That's the, um. Bernard Diaz knew about that. What's, go Will. What's going on, man? We're doing the video, man. Man. What, the big head show? <laughs> no. We do life on the big, big The white man can't jump show. No, this is the Bernard Diaz. This is the one we've been talking about. Oh, Joe's Bernard Diaz? <laughs> yeah. All right. Tape. Pull up the video of Bernard Diaz. We're going to see the real video. The whole video? We're going to go through it. We're going to go right to the part. This is, um, this is how people remember Bernard Diaz. He started looking like a skeleton, they said. He really did. He started looking like a lot of these villagers and stuff. You couldn't even look into Bernard Diaz's eyes. A lot of the villagers, a lot of the peasants were afraid of him already. They already knew what he did to a lot of the Spanish. I mean, a lot of the Indians. A lot of the natives were abused. So let's go to the video. This is me, finally after that adventure, Uncle's this is me. After for a long time. I heard something. There's something over there. And algo allá. No mire. This is, this is us right here. You gotta pay attention closely because this is the part where he says, Largate! And he comes out and sees us. Watch, listen. Watch. Listen. Listen. 
you heard it? I got to rewind it. Rewind it? Oh, I didn't hear. Rewind it. You didn't hear that? He said, no. I got that. Just a little bit. Watch, you're going to hear it again. Don't be chewing. Listen. Right when he slams the door. Oh, I heard that. You heard it? You heard it, Joe? Mm -hmm. He says it clearly. There he goes, there. Look, there he is right there. Freeze it. Freeze it. That's him right there. Bernard he is. He's standing right in front of me. But you didn't know until like you came back and then... Well, I didn't know. I felt the spear, but I didn't see him. He's actually holding something. Look at that. Let it play. Rewind it. That's him. Look. That's us. What's that green light? That's us right there. We were messing around. Wait, why was everyone screaming? Because he's scared about that? Yeah. All that's him. Quit making that noise so I can hear you. Look at it. That's him right there. That's us talking. He turns around. He turns into a skeleton. He looks right at them. You see him perfect right there. Bernard B.S. You didn't notice? Go back. Rewind him a little. Just Wait, a little bit. I was like, run. Go back a little bit. So it's gonna be just us. Well, oh. look real quick, I got a couple. Of we're taking off right now. It? Well, what happened is okay, I went into Mexico and I, I wanted to film something. I wanted to film a haunted house. So I told my uncle, take me to the most haunted house. And he goes, there is a haunted house. So we go down there effing around, hoping that we'll see a, a demon or something or, you know, just like anything. And this is what happened. I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. Then we'll talk about it, okay? Go push play. Oh, man. Yeah, how we just said. Been out there for a long time. I heard something. This is good. There's something over there. I know. That's him. Did you he said, him? Yeah, well, I, I told you, I felt his spirit. That's, that's, that's my Theo right there. He was actually scared because what happened is that someone called us out of the truck. They called us out of the car. And he jumped the gun to someone came up to our windshield. Someone really came up to our windshield and said, let's go. Vamonos. So we started um, going on with the window. Look at him. You can see him perfect. Bring that picture. Bernard Diaz. Don't get Bernard Diaz over there. On the wall. What did you just ask me? Oh, is that video fake? He asked me if this video is fake. You think I'm going to spend all my life... Working on a Bernard Diaz, a pinche Bernard Diaz. Hold it up, Joe. Let's see, let's get a comparison right here. Right here, look. I think I'm gonna get a Bernard Diaz comparison and not, and not take it serious. That was him right there. That's him, huh? Mm -hmm. That's him? Yeah. I wonder what he wanted to tell me. I told you, get out. He told me, Largate! And this is why I wear this t-shirt right here. This t-shirt right here I drew of the mighty Mayan witch who's supposed to chase away all evil spirits. And this is one of the reasons I wear this t-shirt. It's a good one, huh? Well, that's exactly why I drew it. So, this is actually the, the real footage of him. We're gonna go ahead and um, let you watch it and tell me what you think, huh? The little brother doesn't want to go, he's scared of the... Damn, Yorona, so it's going to be just us. Vamos! Well, we're taking off right now. Try to be there before it's dark. Because when it gets dark, it just, it all goes down. Well, right now, we're fucked. Because yesterday, we got stuck in the sand. And some people pulled, it, pulled us out and fucked up the whole bottom of our car. So it looks like right now, we're stuck in Mexico. But there's a house right up here. We're gonna try to make it up there. My uncle says it's pretty close to the haunted house. Believe it or not, it smells like fucking dog shit around here. It's how sick it is over here, look. Look it, look it, look it. That's the house right there. I see you guys, huh? That's the house, this is the time. I don't know if I should go. 
But we're Down. going. Hey! I seen it right there. Contenta. Ahí la miré. We're here. Now. Alcance a ver. Alguien pero no 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 le di. No vi si no. Alguien. Alguien. No no si te digo que es una piel. Vamos. Vamos. Are they in the bag? Yeah. 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 Well, we're finally here. Like I said, I ain't scared of no ghosts, so I give a fuck. Come on. Okay. My cousin finally came after all. He wasn't too scared, but I give it. Just grab all the lights. Well, before before it gets dark, dude, I don't want to be here. I really, I don't want to be here because I've seen somebody that... When I first pulled up on the side, there was someone standing there. I came back around and it's just... Hello. ¿Cómo se llamaba? Ahumada. De... Allá un tonel. De para allá. De 100 años. A hundred years. Un siglo de existencia. Mi papá tiene 90 y él anduvo en esta casa cuando estaba joven. Y ya His era... dad is 90 years old. My grandpa used to come over here when he was a kid to see if he could see the witches, las brujas, ah, and no. everything else that came with this. He said there's all kinds of stuff that comes out of this house. ¿Qué pasó con la gente que no trabajaba? La gente que no trabajaba aquí en esta hacienda. Los, les daban trabajo y después ya que no estaban muy mayores los horcaban y los enterraban. Well, el cual el panteón estaba aquí y la aquí vinieron las tropas y sacaron mucho huevo yeah. y cantaron un torral. Well, what happened right here? The rich acá. people they built this hacienda right here. They would the, they would have all these field workers from everywhere come and work, and that right when they're gonna pay them, they would kill them all, hang them in this very tree, and bury them right here. His dad knew about this place when he was a kid. They used to whip them to death because they were lazy and they were peasants. And back then, rich people could do whatever they want to peasants. He would come through here on his bike and he would hear and see things all the time. Muchas veces. Muchas veces he grew up here in this area. Gotta put, gotta put repellent because it's dangerous out here in the jungle. The jungle. Well, a lot of people have not ever entered the house. Mucha gente no va para adentro, huh? No. They're too, tienen miedo, they're too scared. And, um, should we go in? No. They don't go in, but my uncle says we should go in. So, yeah, yeah. No, you won't believe it. No, the house is really here. It's in the middle of Sinaloa. No, it, it's really here. It's exactly how they, they said it was going to be, no joke, and we came at that time that we should leave. All right, but we're going to go inside. Uh, we're going to go inside. We're going to go inside. Don't even worry about it. All right. Let's go. Let's go. It's really corroded and old. This is during the time during the Spanish in the missions and the missionaries. But look at this tree. Vamos para acá. Pon la luz. It's like a web of a jungle. La señora que acá habitaba aquí se llamaba Mamacha. Vamos a mirar, señora Alu. Vamos. Abril.
A mí, que me dijo que no me armé, en el trapo que es. De palma, de palma. Ah, sí, es de palma. Ah, bonita. Para que no llegaran los vampiros, pero pues ahí están adentro. ¿Ya podemos pasar? Sí. Se están quemando la mejor para pagar el aire acondicionado. Abrí. Ya, abrí. ¿no? Vamos. Here. I've been hearing about this place since I was a kid. Ever since like I was teenage age, they've been telling me about this place here in Sinaloa. ¿Qué es eso? Mira. 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 Ahí está de qué. Not a, my uncle said there's not a whole lot of people that ever had the balls to come into this house. It's fucking infested with mosquitoes and bats. Hundreds of people were killed in the 1800s. Jake, I told you to charge those batteries. I did. He says we should go outside for right now before it really gets dark in here. We can't find the way out. We came this way, and we came this way over here. We just can't find. Okay. Eh? What the fuck? Ay, ay, ay. Let's go. Come on. Get in, dude. No vieron? Shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. Let's go. Let's go. Vámonos. Vamos. Las llaves. Las llaves. ¿Dónde las dejaste? Where the keys? Por aquí las tenías que haber dejado. Las llaves. Who got the keys? No. I don't know what the fuck, but it got fucking hella dark quick, dude. I mean, like, dark. Look at that shit. I don't know what the fuck happened, but are my keys in here? You got them, Jacob? Nope. You got them? Mm -hmm. Cool. Los tiré, tío. ¿Alguien quiere ir por ella? No. No, no. Tienen miedo. My, my cousin's gonna my cousin's gonna go get the keys. Espero, te espero. Yeah. You don't got the keys? Nadie con los llaves? No. Nadie? No. My uncle's been out there for a long time. I heard something. There's something over there. And algo allá. Lo miré.
Vámonos, vámonos, mira, mira, vámonos. ¡Ah! Vámonos, 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 vámonos,
But what are the odds Tree making, that. making that exactly when I need for someone to come out? What are the odds? And what are the odds when I take this picture and I show and I show the wolf man who it is and he tells me exactly who that is. What are the odds of that happening? What are the odds? Listen. What are the odds of someone that caused so much evil to other people and scared so many people for hundreds of years? What are the odds of them sacrificing Indians, Native Americans for their own greed, for them not to have some kind of... What are the odds of me not knowing this? How would the Wolfman from Mexico, who's in the, in the Aztec calendar, where's it at? The, the Aztec calendar, what are the odds? You know, it's like... How would I get that image? Look at all the destruction they did. And what about the poison that he drank? What about that? Wouldn't that cause it? Couldn't that bring something later, Joe? Yeah. What do you think? He's whatever he spit out was what? His soul. His soul. And he became what? Demon. And 400 years later, if we got all these other ghosts right here in Mexico, La Llorona, our grandpa's witch, Chupacarvas, the wolf lady, La Llorona from the Mayans, Lechuzas, the werewolves, down to the real wolf people. Who's not saying that it's not Bernard Diaz? If all these people right here are saying it is, and I have the video, these are people that suffered a lot. These are people that didn't get to live happy lives because they were tormented by the soul. I got some good news, guys. We're going back to the house where I recorded that. Yep. No, I mean it, for us. And we're gonna stay the night. All right, I'm down. I'm gonna stay the night, and we're gonna have the cameras running. And we're going. You going, Joe? Yep. Are you down? Yep. I'm down. There's only one way is to go back for part two. Yeah. The story of Bernard Diaz de Castillo. Oh, my notes. Let's see what you got. Oh. You know what, kid? And if you didn't want to do this report, why didn't you do one on George Washington? Why didn't you do one on, on Abraham Lincoln? Why didn't you do one on Martin Luther King? Martin Luther. Why didn't you do one on Prince Charles or something? Why? You know, if you want to waste my time, because I want to do one on him. Right. See what happened after Bernard Diaz, he drank some bloody, he drank some bloody potion and he knew that he messed up. Blood was everywhere. This is blood from, um, from 10,000 men. This is blood from 10,000 men. Imagine that. Damn. Imagine. Some, some rotten blood. Imagine that. It's all rotten. Man. Yeah. Imagine all the hepatitis. They didn't have it. They had words. This is the disappear. Look at that. He's just like this. this. I wouldn't drink that. Of course, you turn into a ghost after you drink that, huh? Some spiritual. They did. He, he was so powerful. The, the, the God was so powerful, Montezuma, that he ordered the men kill themselves. Imagine, yep. you would have to be a powerful god, huh? And that's what happened. And that's how he became a ghost in the spirit. Cut.